is clear, however, that one needs to perform those sets to failure where you can't perform another repetition in good form again or near to failure. There's a lot of information saying that you need to move weights that are, you know, 80 to 90% of your one rep maximum or 70% or cycle that for three weeks on and then go to more moderate weights. There, there are a lot of paths as, um, as some people say, there are a lot of ways to, to add up numbers to get a hundred, you know, there's a near infinite number of ways to add up different numbers to get to a hundred. And what's very clear now from all the literature that's transpired and especially from the literature in this last three years is that. Once you know roughly your one repetition maximum, the, the maximum amount of weight that you can perform an exercise with for one repetition in good form, full, full range of motion, that it's very clear that moving weights or using bands or using body weight, for instance, in the 30 to 80% of one rep maximum that is going to be the most beneficial range in terms of muscle hypertrophy and strength. So muscle growth and strength. And there will be a bias. If you're moving weights that are in the 75%, 80% range, or maybe even going above that 85 and 90%, you're going to bias your improvements towards strength gains. This is true. And if you use weights that are in the 30% of your one repetition maximum or 40% or 50% and doing many more repetitions, of course, then you are biasing towards hypertrophy and what some people like to call muscle endurance. But that's a little bit of a complicated term because endurance we almost always think of as relating to running or swimming or some long bouts of activity. So 30 to 80% of one repetition maximums, it doesn't really seem to matter for sake of hypertrophy, except at the far ends when you're really trying to bias for strength. Now, it is clear, however, that one needs to perform those sets to failure where you can't perform another repetition in good form again or near to failure. And there's all sorts of interesting nomenclature that's popping up all over the internet, some of which is scientific, some of which is not scientific about how you are supposed to perceive how close you were to failure, etc. But there are some very interesting principles that relate to how the nerves connect to the muscles that strongly predict whether or not this exercise that you're performing will be beneficial for you or not. So here's how it goes. For individuals that are untrained, meaning they have been doing resistance exercise for anywhere from zero, probably out to about two years. Although for some people it might be zero to one year, but that, those are the so-called beginners. They're sort of untrained. For those people, the key parameter seems to be to perform enough sets of a given exercise per muscle per week. Okay. The same is also true for people that have been training for one or two years or more. What differs is how many sets to perform depending on whether or not you're trained or untrained. So let's say you're somebody who's been doing some resistance exercise kind of on and off over the years, and you decide you want to get serious about that for sake of sport or offsetting age-related declines in strength. The range of sets to do in order to improve strength, to activate these cascades in the muscle, ranges anywhere from two, believe it or not, to 20 per week. 